Let's open our Bible tonight. Amen. To the book of Judges. The book of Judges. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 6. Judges 6 and verse number 11. Amen. Judges 6 and verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the timbreth at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Asberites, while his son Gideon was beaten out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of, the, of Midian. And the Lord turned to him, and the Lord turned to him, and said, Go in this might of yours, and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. And the results of that. Very recently I was reading and the book of Judges progresses to a very strange place. Beginning with a, a, a man who steals money from his mother. And they go, they construct a god. And... They get a priest, and then it becomes, it, it just goes downhill from there to all kinds of sexual immorality, all kinds of fighting between the people of God, because the people do not know God, and it creates an environment that is sad. Man left to himself not only sees destruction from external enemies, and there are many people, many, many, who like to talk about the external enemies without realizing that sin causes you to destroy yourself. In fact, the Bible speaks of Jesus encountering a demoniac and that man is, this is his description, cutting himself, destroying himself. But the book of Judges has I believe a greater lesson <clears throat> than just the story of man without God. If there is a greater story than there being no king in Israel and everybody does what is right in their own eyes and what is right is not right at all. But the greater story 
is what happens when God steps in. Because the book of Judges is filled with the stories of ordinary men. Ordinary. Nothing particularly special about them. Except that God steps into their life. And when God steps into their life, there is something supernatural that happens. There is something spectacular that happens. God turns things around. The results are astounding. God does not only give man strength mentally but he supernaturally empowers man to turn his situation around this was what makes this book so significant that we find here men who are not necessarily men of pedigree or special status there is nothing exceptionally special about them. God just uses ordinary men to accomplish extraordinary things. And Gideon is such a man. The Bible begins in verse 6 talking about the oppression of Midian and not much is told us about Gideon. We are told of very bad oppression. That the people of Israel would plant and the enemies would come and forcibly take their crops. And, 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 and Gideon is suffering like everyone else. And in fact, this is one of, you know, there, there are messages that stick with you. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to actually speak to Pastor Joel Ocean and thank him for preaching from this message. It's one of those that I've listened over and over and over where he preaches about wheat from the wine press. Where this man, this man does something strange. You were supposed to beat the wheat where up on a mountain in a threshing floor, but, but it was a place up on the mountain where the wind would blow. And in fact, John the Baptist talks about it that the chaff is taken away. As you would beat that wheat, the wheat would fall to the ground and all of the debris that would be in it would be taken away with the wind. But Gideon is afraid. Gideon is just looking for a solution and so he finds himself in the wine press, beating wheat. It, 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 it is a frustrating job because he's not getting the wind that he should get. It would seem from the scripture that there was some wind giving him some level of success. But, but I can begin to imagine what is going on in the mind of Gideon as he is beating that wheat in the wine press. As he considers the situation around him. That they are being oppressed by Midian. And uh, he doesn't know if the Midianites will come into this wine press. And take from him the little wheat that he has gotten 
uh, beaten out and he has threshed and, 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 and there are all kinds of things going through his mind and, 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 and uh, you, you know what, what I'm talking about as he's beaten with the His words indicate it. And I'm sure Gideon doesn't feel the victory right there. Gideon doesn't feel victorious. Gideon doesn't feel powerful. Gideon doesn't feel anointed. Gideon doesn't feel like the chosen of God. In fact, when the word of God came to him, he says, if God is really for us, where are the miracles? Now, you, those of you who know your Bible know a scripture that Gideon does not know. It's Hebrews 11 and verse 6. That says, whoever comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek after him. Aren't you thankful that God does as David describes in the psalmist? If you were to regard iniquity, you would stand. Bypasses. Because Gideon is in this place. And every description that we have of a mighty man of valor is not Gideon. Gideon is not the one that we call to preach the revival for us. Gideon is not the one that we call to pray when we have that gotten that phone call. You know what I'm talking about. Gideon is not the brother that you go to when you're feeling down and want to get lifted up. He's not that man. But the word of God comes to Gideon. And this is the word of God to Gideon. Gideon, you mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. I come to encourage us to tell us that there is a miracle within you. And the miracle is within you when you don't feel like the miracle is within you. When you don't feel anointed. When you don't have that strong voice to say it like I'm saying it right now. You and you don't feel the Holy Spirit as you pray the prayer. But the miracle is within you. Because the word of God to Gideon was, the Lord is within, with you. Amen. And Gideon is telling God, oh, some, somebody needs to get a hold of this. He's telling God, who is telling him that he is with him, if you're with me, where are the miracles? He doesn't even have faith. But the word does not change over his life. Oh, I come to encourage somebody that the miracle, there is a miracle within you. There is a miracle within you. You see, Gideon felt all alone. But I want to tell you, God was there with him. Gideon felt like he was helpless. But here's what God says. I'm the one who gives you strength. Gideon felt insignificant, but God called him a mighty man of valor. Oh, Gideon felt like he was powerless. But God says, I am the one who has given you power, Gideon. See, oftentimes, 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 we are like Gideon. We look into God. And you know where we look into? Some external power. That's Gideon's problem. Gideon is looking externally. You know where God's focus was in Gideon? 
，因此呢。Uh, let, let me let me let me let me let me just go back to verse number one, so that you you get an understanding of what's going on. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel, because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves dens that are in the mountains and caves and the strongholds and whatever the Israelites, whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them. <coughs> they would devour their pro produce. Here's what verse 5 says. They would come with their livestock in their tents and they would come like locusts in number. And Gideon is there in the wine press, which is like his little den, beating wheat, and he's saying in his mind, oh, how defeated I am, how defeated I am. And, and you know Gideon's praying that power? God, send somebody. God, do something. You, you know the prayers that we pray? You know the prayer? God. And God did something. God sent somebody to stand in front of Gideon and say to the man, as he's beaten with, hiding. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. See, many times our, our focus is external. Boy, if we can get this preacher, we'll have revival. You, you know? You, you know, see, if I can just get sister so-and-so to pray for me. Boy, you, you, and the Lord is saying, I am with you. I am with you. Here is the word of God to Gideon. Verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, This is the word. This is the word to Gideon. Verse 14. Go in this might of yours. You see, when Gideon goes into the camp of Midian because he doesn't believe, God sent him there at night. And he hears the Midianites discussing. And they said, it's the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Oh, oh, child of God, you need to get a hold of it that God has placed a miracle within you. And when the word of God says, greater is he that is in you, he means you. He doesn't mean your neighbor. He doesn't mean the pastor. He doesn't mean somebody else that you look into. But greater is he that is in you. Amen. The miracle is within you. The Bible tells the story of Moses sending spies into the land. They come back with the spoils of Cana. But ten come back with an evil report saying, We were as grasshoppers in their sight. The reports that the men get from Rahab. Yes. We heard. Let me tell you, you need to hear this. You need to hear this because God made them walk about for 40 years in the wilderness. And Rahab says, we heard what God did in Egypt. Oh, get... Get a hold of it, child of God. 
that there's a miracle within you. There's a miracle within you that the people will see in the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon and the sword of the Lord and the people of Israel and they just couldn't see it because they were looking for some external something when God was saying go in your might go in your power I have anointed you to do the work I have given you the power I have strengthened you I have empowered you I I have given you the strength to go forward and do it and it's not by your might but not by your power but by my spirit that is within you yeah there's a miracle in you there is a miracle in you there is a miracle within you. I, I, I believe God is calling us as he's called Gideon and many others to recognize it's within you. It is within you go and to get the victory for yourself I see many 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 times we look in we we be looking be looking externally 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 the pharaoh in egypt would see what was in the people and the people could not see it. Know what he says? The people are mightier than us. Let us raise up taskmasters. And the plagues of Egypt were not so much about dealing with Egypt, you know. Yeah, God was dealing with Egypt. But you know what those plagues were doing as well? They were showing the people of Israel. Come on. Come on. There's a miracle within you. God wants to do something great within you. God wants to do something great with your life. Come on, Gideon. I know you're hiding there in the den. But God doesn't want you hiding in the den. He wants you out there. Amen. Those of you who know the story know that Gideon won a victory with 300 men. You want to know why? God had to tell and send people home. And then bring them to the water and again say, send people home. You want to know why God had to tell them, him that? It was because God wanted to show Gideon. There's a miracle within you. God had to prove it to Gideon. Because if Gideon had raised up a mighty army, Jesus. he would have thought it, would have, it was because of the army. Jesus. God had to prove it to him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand up, children of God. Jesus. And I wish that we would just stand in faith. Recognizing there's a miracle within you. There is a miracle. The Bible says God is able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think. And some translations even put or even imagine. You know what it says? According to the power that's at work in you. There's a miracle in you. There's a miracle in you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray that you 
touch us, increase our faith, 